Hey YouTube, Bow Brawl here with a brand new video review. This time it's something a little special. I want to do a bit of a specific oversight look at one of my favorite toy engineering systems, Glios. Specifically looking over my favorite producer of it, the God Beast, with his own creation, the Kabuto Mushi. This thing is one of the best examples of toy engineering and it has so much fun and potential. It is a ton of fun and I'm really looking forward to spotlighting it. And this review has been a long time in the work and I put a lot of time and work into it. So I hope it properly shows off why this is one of my favorite systems. Now what is the Glio system? The Glio system is a universal peg and socket joint that allows for toys to be completely and utterly disassembled and then remade into whatever you want. And as you'll see in this video, other producers of Glios use the system. The system was invented by Matt Dowdy of O'Neill Designs, and he licensed it out to several producers, and I believe there are 20 producers right now of Glios producing different figures and toy lines, all intercompatible. And there's Glios Buildable and Compatible. Glios Buildable is simply the fact that you can legitimately take this figure apart and make completely new things. Compatible is just like Knights of the Slice. They come apart just for easy assembly and are glass compatible, but that hand's going to be a hand, that arm's going to be an arm, that chest's going to be a chest, and there isn't a lot of variety. But the Kabuto Mushi is one of the most amazing self-containing building systems of glass compatibility ever. I am still blown away to this day with what you can do with a few or just one of these things. So let's play the awesome theme song and get into why this is my absolute favorite offering from Goliaths. This may be a general overview of the Kabuto Mushi. I will be spotlighting the Veseract Mushi release, my personal favorite and my first ever taste of the Glio system. The Kabuto Mushi is a product of the God Beast love for insects and action figures. And you can tell because this thing just looks amazing. It's got a spiky design and a very mean look to it, especially in the eyes, that really make it stand out among other Glio's figures. Overall, the Mushi is going to be a fun piece to build. It excels in self-contained builds. So let's show you all the pieces that come with this guy. You get two feet, two shins, two extenders, two thigh pieces, a cod piece, a chest, this little dome piece that kind of looks like a pea. These two little pods here in the back, they are very tiny, very easy to lose, and very difficult to get out. They lie in the back of the chest plate. And trust me, they are nice. But it feels like you're gonna break something every time you try to take it out. These two double pin connectors, not quite switch pins, but very close. A ant and spider-like head for extra options. Two spiky shoulder pieces, two bicep pieces, two forearm pieces, two fists, your main Mushi head, and what beetle is incomplete without his horn. And there's your Kabuto Mushi. Now this is one of the default builds that you have available to you, and also included is a mini Mushi. These guys are really cool little dudes. They're a static piece with no buildability, but I have seen some impressive builds that still use this guy, and I'll show you a few of them in here. Each release comes with one of these mini Mushis, so when you start collecting them, you'll have a little army and swarm of these guys running around, and they are in matching color schemes. And each Mushi comes with one, which is a nice little feature. Now each Mushi has a good amount of articulation, which I will admit is one of Glios's weak points. The Glio system, a simple peg and socket system for universal attachment, is not suited for articulation, but there are ways around it. Matt Dowdy, the father of Glios, created axis joint sets, which a lot of Glios producers do borrow and use for their releases. These axis joints basically create a universal shoulder. I'll even show some examples of it, but your standard Mushi is gonna have rotation at the head, arm, arms up and down, rotation here, swivel, 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 and if you put the spacers here, you can actually change them and get a pseudo knee joint. Though it does depend on the orientation of the spacers. And again, it also depends on your build. This is a standard Mushi build, though they can get very complicated and very fun with different articulation levels. 
All Around Your Mushi is a very fun design and I love the bug theme. And God Beast loves his homages. If you follow him, you'll know that there are tons of homages, from simple stuff like Pokemon to Ultraman, Skeletor, Giver, the Insecticons, heck, even other Insecticons like Shark. You could even get one that's done up in a common Rider color scheme. Man, I would kill to have that. And a personal favorite of mine is the Arachnid one that comes with extra pieces. See, Glyos producers will sometimes use other pieces to enhance their builds. And that's the main power of Glyos, building. Here are some options that you can build with one Mushi, which in my opinion is the Kabuto Mushi's greatest feat, self-contained builds. Most Glyos figures look robotic in some way, or a guy in a suit, or alien. The Mushi's extremely organic design doesn't build well with those. However, with self-contained builds, one Mushi can give you so many options. For example, here's one build that uses the ant-like head. And another personal favorite is the Pharaoh build, a simple deviation that adds the spacers to the shoulders, which allow him to cross his arms. A simple variation, but a variation nonetheless. And you have more options, not just simple painted figures with almost no paint on the eyes. To complicated painted figures like these, you can get translucent figures. Figures with even better paint schemes. Figures with no paint schemes that just rely on plastic pieces for switching. And you're starting to see the power of Glyos. Look at all these figures. See how they're using a unique and different build for each one? And these are all single build Mushis. That's right, each Mushi build you're looking at right here are made with one Mushi and no extra pieces. And it could be something simple like this without being too complicated and abstract. This is a personal build I came up with and I'm quite proud of. And you see the versatility of this line. Look at this, seriously, look at this. In any other toy line, these would all be different molds. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 Mushis, each with a unique and different build. And this is just with one Kabuto Mushi. Think about that. These are the exact same toy. Here's one that uses two Mushis and a switch pin. It uses all the pieces and does deviate from the official build that these were released as. But yeah, that's two Mushis, getting a hulking figure that's a lot bigger than your traditional Kabuto Mushi. But again, when you have two Mushis in the build, that's to be expected. And here is a custom build I did using just two O'Neill axis joint systems, which allow it to have much more articulation. This uses almost all the pieces, and each one of these joints are basically universal joints, giving it swivels and rotations to get any kind of articulation you need. And it uses almost all the pieces as mentioned. He also looks a much taller and bigger than your traditional Mushi. Now keep in mind, this is two axis joint systems, and just one potential build you can do. Because with Glyos, just because you have the same pieces doesn't mean you can build just one thing. This is the Modulok Mushi, a DX release done up as the He-Man villain Modulok. And this uses all the pieces to create this monstrosity. And again, it's just two Glyos Axis joint upgrades. And that's it. This guy doesn't use all the pieces and uses the same exact parts. And you can see how different they are. Not just in color scheme, but in just, well, presentation and build. That's the power of Glyos. You can do anything you want, and the more you get, the better they become. Here's a Kabuto Mushi build that uses just two extra pieces, these flaps right here. But this build is 100% doable without those flaps. This is the Nemesis, another offering that Matt Daddy has, and will be the subject of the next review we'll be doing. It's a great companion piece for the Mushi, and if you have the two of them, you can fusion ha into this monstrosity I call the Nemesis Mushi. Now it doesn't use all the pieces and uses the alternate heads. A lot of times when you buy a Mushi, he'll come with some alternate heads that you can use. And this uses the Mantis alternate head. He also has special one-time release heads that he'll use and drop off once in a while, though I haven't been lucky to pick those up. So this is, we've gone from just Mushis to multiple Mushis to with axis joint systems, now including the Nemesis in the builds. Now to fully convince you about the Glyo system. This is the Bio Monster from Biomaster's Creations. A 
different toy company than the Kabuto Mushi. I want you to remember that. These guys are not made by the same people. But because they use the Glyo system, you can actually get them in the same color scheme and combine them into a new creature. And the best part, this isn't the official build that was shown by the God Beasts. This is a build I came up with that uses the pieces in a unique way. So yeah, other figures can build to create new figures. That's the power of Glyos. The more you get, the more you can do. And with what you have, you can do more than just one simple toy. I've just gotten into another Glyos line called the Warriors of Manka. Very fun figures that come with weapons. In fact, if you go to Spy Monkey Creations, you can just pick up the weapons by themselves for $2. That's a pretty good deal and upgrade several figures, giving this Mushi swords. And heck, if you have other weapons like the guns or the sickles they come with, you can upgrade them even further. I personally love to give these scythe weapons to my chopper Mushi. They just look cool and work with the color scheme. Doesn't that look cool? And again, in any other toy line, these would be two completely different molds. But with the Glyo system, they are the exact same figure with the exact same parts. In fact, I'm going to toss up some more builds that I found that I didn't have enough Mushis to properly show you in this video. I'm also going to put up a picture of a really unique build I saw using a mini Mushi. Cutting it in half, drilling a hole in it, and putting a switch pin into it to actually make it look like it's controlling the body of a normal Mushi like a giant mech. This is the power of Glyos. If you can think it, if you can imagine it, you can do it. And this is why I absolutely love this toy line. You get a connection to the artist because it's a more personal, being the fact that it's independent toy companies creating what they want. And I think that's amazing. And there are, if I'm not mistaken, over 20 producers of Glyos, from Spy Monkey Creations to the God Beast, which we have in front of us, to the AV robot, Warriors of Monka and many, many, many more, including the granddad of them all, Matt Doughty, the father of Glyos. I wanted to show off the Glyos system that I fell in love with and why I think it's one of the best and most ingenious toy lines out there. The sheer creativity, the sheer amount of play value, the fun you can have with this line is amazing to me. And I didn't even get to show off all of my figures. I still have the Titan Mushi, which is actually a very cool release from the God Beast. In fact, this is the Titan Mushi. Now it is capable of coming apart using a new Glyo system, but because it's a vinyl figure and much bigger, you're not gonna get much in terms of switching them out with your normal figures. They're meant for other vinyls. But what makes this guy unique is that he can stand or be a four wheel crawler. You could even cut this out and use it as a point to mount your Mushi into it. I've even seen some people, unfortunately I couldn't find the image of it, cut into it and make it into a mech suit for other Mushis. But look at all this. In any other toy line, it'd be crazy. But Glyos, you can do this. Having several independent toy creators working together on the same system to create one of the most diverse and amazing toy lines out there. I only collect four Glyos toy lines. The Warriors of Manka, the AV Robot, the Biomasters, and the Kabuto Mushis. They have different molds within them, but that's the thing. They're different lines and they are amazing. I cannot stress how much I love and admire the Glyo system. It's so much fun and this is a small taste of what's to come. I can't wait to talk more about it with the Nemesis and a Warriors of Manka release when I do get more figures to talk about and properly show off the display and play options. But yeah, this is the power of Glyos. This is why I like the system, but I do acknowledge there are some weak points mainly two. One is articulation. If you're a stickler for that, you're not going to get it with these figures. Though you can pick up substitutes such as axis joints and switch pin systems from Matt Dowdy and O'Neill Creations that will actually help make the figures more articulated. But that's a substitute. The main true problem of Glyos is their nature. These are independent art toys, meaning they're a little expensive. A Warrior Monkov release will cost you about 12 bucks, which isn't bad, but that's as much as a Kabuto Mushi. Yeah, and DX ones that include more pieces or even just more paint apps can cost more money, which I don't mind. I get a personal connection to the artist that, as an artist myself, I truly appreciate and I don't mind paying a little more, especially when I'm getting more fun from these figures than official figures being released. Also, timing. 
I recommend following each one on social media if you want to get into the line because they'll tell you when the figures will be released. There's no regular schedule. They just say, hey, at this time, this day, I'm doing a drop night. And if you're not there, you're going to miss it. There aren't re-releases in these lines. And well, that is a downside to the Glio system that there aren't re-releases. Either way, it is a bit frustrating to get older figures since I'm having trouble getting them. And well, that is a downside to the system. But don't let that scare you away from Glios. It is an amazing system that I can't praise enough. I love the system and I'll just sit down and make a new figure and play with them for hours. So yes, I do admit there are flaws, but this line has far too many good things to do. And this went from just a general oversight of the Kabuto Mushi specifically to a little bit of all of Glios because of how amazing and interconnected they are and just how fun they are. If you love Legos, this is the, the line you need to get into. And there's simply one for everyone. Basic figures to golems, bug men, aliens, you name it, it's out there. In fact, Toyfinity, a line I've been trying to get into, they actually have robots that, well, are giant freaking robots that you can rearrange into different robots and configurations. I've even seen some people build vehicles and gur walkers with them. So, yeah. This is a line I heavily recommend getting into, and everything I've mentioned will be linked in the description. Matt Dowdy, The God Beast, Spy Monkey Creations, Biomasters, AV Robot, and Toyfinity, all gonna be less, and there are far more Glios producers. Like I said, I believe there's over 20 producers of Glios right now, and that includes Knights of the Slice and Battle Beasts. So, if you wanna get into a toy line, and don't mind spending a little bit more, this is the line I recommend. And don't worry, this channel will not become a Glios channel. I just want to spotlight one of my favorite toy lines and talk about it in depth instead of just my battle loop videos. And that's it for this review. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, comment what your favorite Mushi is and some of the build ideas you have. Let me know what you think of Glios and if you want to see more. I do plan on reviewing the Nemesis in my next video review, and it's good to be back reviewing figures. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. You take care now. Goodbye.